Well, Easter is, Easter is right around the corner, and I am telling you, I love looking for Easter eggs, or I did when I was a kid. We always used to do an Easter egg hunt at my grandmother's house if the weather was too confrontational to be outside. Uh, my grandmother would hide the Easter eggs and jelly bean eggs and so on all over her little house in North Minneapolis. And it was my brother's and my great joy as children to run around Grandma's house looking for all the Easter eggs. Well, in that spirit, Chris at OSP Snuff has come out with the snuff he is referring to as the Easter egg. Uh, now, the Easter egg is an interesting project here. Here's the deal. You donate to Chris in order to get a tin of the Easter egg, but there is no information posted on his website other than his most recent hint that this tobacco is comprised of two different tobaccos as a base and one topping. Should be pretty simple to dissect, but it ain't. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a shot. I will probably be dead wrong. I am not the snuff expert that I am cracked up to be sometimes, and Chris will challenge my nostrils. In the tin, silky, very nice, very pleasant, beautiful uniform grind. Whoops. Thank Three you. notifications. Yes, thank you, Siri. Uh, where was I? Okay, so the grind is beautiful, silky, of medium moisture, medium to dry moisture. Uh, I don't know how Chris manages to get such consistently great, even beautifully milled grinds out of his snuff. It is absolutely uniform, absolutely gorgeous. Now, what do we have in this little tin here? Well, oddly enough, right away, I'm smelling something that's a bit like lavender. Um, I think there is some lavender in this. If there is a topping, it may be lavender. Uh, that's what it smells like to me, but I won't swear to it until I take a pinch. So let's do this. Now, I have spent about a week and a half with this snuff, and it still confuses the hell out of me. Again, I am... Oh, that's what I meant to tell you. Um, so you buy a, t a tin of this stuff from OSP Snuff, and then you have the option of analyzing it the way I'm doing now, posting a YouTube video uh, and whatever, and the person who comes closest to the actual recipe wins a year's subscription to OSP Snuff, which means you get a tin of everything that Chris produces, a medium tin, over the coming year, including uh, examples of the Esprit de Corps project, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. So, I've been warming this pinch, hoping that it will yield its secrets to me. Let's find out. Salud! Yeah, there's lavender. There, I'm quite certain there's lavender in there. I get that soapiness, uh, ivory soap sort of smell, but not at all unpleasant. Now, let's try to dissect that nicot or that tobacco base a little bit. I almost said nicotine base. Uh, frankly, Chris's snuffs often yield quite a bit of nicotine. I do not know if it's because OSP snuff typically only uses the lamina of the leaf. That's the part of the tobacco leaf between the veins. If it isn't vein or stem on the tobacco leaf, it's lamina. All right? That's the tenderloin, the filet mignon of the tobacco leaf. Call me crazy, this has some Latakia in it, I think, but it's not fire cured. I think Chris might have started out with some raw leaf and fermented it. Uh, it's drippy. It's got a forward drip, and Chris said, well, Paul, that'll give you a clue. Yeah, it, it kind of does. Um... Although whether the forward drip comes from the lat or the second tobacco, I'm not sure. The base, I believe, to be Kentucky Burley. But again, eh, I don't know. So my guess, Chris and everybody else, my official guess on the Easter egg is that it, it's an admixture of approximately 20 to 30 percent of fermented rather than fired Latakia over a Kentucky Burley base and then topped with lavender. That is my best guess. 
I am probably dead wrong and will be red faced when Chris finally reveals the recipe. Listen, if you haven't experienced OSP snuff yet, I want you to try it. Uh, only because Chris puts an awful lot of time, research, love, experimentation, and frankly cash into this product just for the sheer love of snuff. He makes no money off of this. Uh, your donations help him continue to buy raw tobacco, uh, casings, toppings, and uh, the cost of the tins and mailing and so on. But he can give you more information about that. Oh my God, I don't have a handkerchief and forward drip on this stuff is, that's prodigious. Uh, back drip on this, right away it's a little burny, a little stingy, which leads me to believe the pH is a little more on the acidy side, uh, probably a little less calcium oxide or calcium carbonate has been put into this as a pH adjuster. Uh, probably a little less than normal. On the squinty scale, uh, where five is the best you can get and one is don't waste your time, it's disgusting, I'm only going to give this a four. This is not to my tastes, it's brilliantly made snuff. I don't like it as much as I like some of Chris's other offerings. But that being said, this is a brilliant snuff. So four out of five on the squinty scale. Now let's talk about the nicotine. On a scale of one to ten, where one is nada, and 10 is <clears throat> this is going to rate right around a 7 maybe even an 8 not quite a white elephant not quite an ensu black uh, however not quite a taxi red however this does provide a big jolt of nicotine really good and again I suspect that's from the burly rather than the latakia I still don't know how to say that word somebody correct me is it latakia or latakia well, whatever it is, and I believe it to be Cyprian rather than Syrian Latakia because it is a bit smoky. But again, because I don't think this has been fire cured rather than it's been fermented, I think I'm right. We'll see. From the Dank Basement, thank you for your patience waiting for new videos. I know it's a, kind of a bitch waiting for my infrequent videos to come out, but I've got a lot of stuff going on in my life right now. Busy time around here. Uh, my wife is about to be fitted with a cochlear implant to restore the hearing in her left ear, which is a good thing, and we're dealing with that. Plus, as I uh, said in an earlier video, I'm in the midst of a huge winter storm here in the North Central Plains, so hanging out in the dank basement, finally getting around to making some videos. Coming up next will be a YTPC thing. Oh, shut up. Now, I love Siri, but we have a love-hate relationship. Yeah, as I said, the next video I produce is going to be a YTPC. We're going to be taking a look at a very, very, very strong tobacco from Gawith Hogarth and Company called Brown Bogey, also known as Happy Brown Bogey. And I'll be reviewing that in just a little bit here on the Paul Shellbetter YouTube snuff, snooze, pipe, and anything that ain't cigarettes channel. Thanks for watching. I gotta go get my cat. He's out playing in the snow. I bet he'll come in looking like a snow beast.